in this method of working with eyes, we have multiple bones that control the points of the eye shape. The construction of the eyes is the standard masked eyes, and we have a bone for each eye in the perimeter of the eye. We have a bone for each point in the perimeter of the eye. We have a bone for the iris, and we've got two bones in the eyebrows. The eyebrows are just composed of four points. The basic setup will look like this. I set the bone constraints for each of the bones to be zero for the ones that control the eye points. And when you manipulate items, you really want to use the transformation bone tool, the one with kind of like a circle looking. That's so that you can select a particular uh, bone and move it around. So to manipulate the eye, you can just drag the points around to make it surprised, for example, and you can rotate. For the eyebrow, I do allow rotations so that I can create different shapes such as an angry eyebrow or perhaps a surprised eyebrow, and you just move it where you want. So with the eyebrow, we can see that I can control multiple points uh, with the bones, so you might see the value in that. But you may wonder, why do I actually want to have um, bones associated with points in the eye when I can just manipulate the points themselves? The answer is that it's allowing me to see all of the controls on the timeline on a particular uh, just layer. So I can just go to the bone layer and I can manipulate these points and so I can see all the keyframes on this uh, one layer, just by looking at this one layer. So as I'm moving through the timeline, it's easy to see uh, where things are changing and make adjustments if you need. So that's the real value the, that I can just uh, manipulate the whole eye just staying at the bone layer. Another very nice thing about this is that it's incredibly flexible. I don't have to have a lot of other smart bones or anything, uh, so I can create a tired look if I want. Um, however I want to do, I can do a blink just by bringing it down and closing the the eye line so I can really do whatever I want and you'll see those keyframes on the timeline. But even better is that if I look over at the actions template I can create actions for standard uh, emotions. This makes things very quick so as I move through um, if I want to now go to a surprised view I can just click on surprised and insert there and I go immediately to surprised and then if I want to now transition from there, I have the start from surprised down to angry and just insert right there and we can see we're able to create those very, very easily. So you'll notice I've got here angry, sad, surprised. I've got a normal, but I don't have a blink. So let's do the blink right now. And actually let's do something even more interesting, which is we'll include an action within an action. So instead of doing the blink to start with, what I will do is I will create an action that I'll just call closed. Now I already have a normal action and I could insert it right here, um, but to show you what I, and that's what you would do for each of the uh, next ones that you create, but to show you how I created the normal, let's do that. So I'm going to press B or select the bone current selection tool and select all of the bones associated with the eye and the eyebrow. I'm going to press shift and do the same thing for the other eye. Now what I'm going to do is click on the transform tool or press T and press reset for the position and the angle. If you look over here it's position, reset, scale reset, and angle reset. This is a very important step, no matter what uh, shape of the eyes that you want to create, because what it will do is make sure that all of the bones are properly set. Now, because surprise 
I actually have the pupil or the iris actually shrink. I'm actually going to go to the pupil, press G or the selection tool for the points, and select all the points associated with the eye. And I'm going to now press the transform uh, tool and click on the background so I've got these points reset properly. Now I'm going to come back to the bone layer. So what that has done is that's just started us at a base default position so that everything associated with the eyes has already been set properly. So now all we're going to do is we're going to use the bone transform tool and drag the eye down and I think we'll drag um, the bottom up a little bit until we have the closed appearance. Now I could deal with curvature but I'm not going to worry about that too much. could change the curvature at the ends of the eyes and I want it to kind of have a little bit of down curve as if he's kind of resting. And that's all I have to do for my closed position. So I'm going to double click on the main line and you can see if I wanted to go in here and on 84 I can click on closed and insert a reference and we've got that closed position so the eye goes straight to that closed position. Now here's something super cool. Let's go ahead and create a new action that we're going to call the blink. And this is going to be so easy. We just go to normal, click on that, and select here we're going to insert a copy so now that's reset everything to the normal position. I'll just go over a couple of frames depending upon how fast you want the, your blink to be. And now I'm going to select closed and insert a copy. And go a couple of more frames and select normal again and insert a copy. Now I'm done with my blink and I can come over to any place I want. Let me go ahead and get rid of the reference that I had to um, the close. Now, let's see if we've got a normal position. Well, let's go ahead and uh, set it to normal reference. Okay, and now here, a little after 84, I'm going to insert the blank. And I'll insert a reference if I want here. And there we go. We've got the blank. So now that blank can be inserted anywhere. And if I want to actually be able to expand the, um, the length, if I want it to blink more slowly, I could insert a copy if I want and select all those, press Alt, and expand out the blank for however long I want it to be. So it's a very slow blink. So there you go. So the, it's very powerful to have these bones associated with the points on the eye, um, and I think that's a really good technique.